So let's start the webinar. OK, this webinar is very much an introduction to the new records management assessment tool. And I'll be referring to the records management assessment tool as the RMAT for the rest of this presentation because it is quite a mouthful. Um, this morning, I'm going to cover some background information on the State Records Act and our approach to regulating the Act, the questions and design considerations we've used for developing the RMAT, and then I'm going to take you um, on a bit of a detailed tour of the RMAT to explain what exactly is the RMAT and to give you some inside information on how to actually use it. And as I mentioned before, there'll be an opportunity to ask questions at the end of the webinar. Um, so if you have questions, just pop them into the chat facility um, and we'll be able to pick those up at the end of the um, actual presentation. Okay. Now, here's some background information about the State Records Act to put the RMAT into context. This may also be useful information to you if you're new to the New South Wales government jurisdiction. Um, the State, State Records Act applies to public officers. Public officers are government agencies, authorities and departments, local government councils, universities and organisations in the public health system. The Act covers approximately 370 organisations. Um, the Act establishes a range of requirements for public officers. These cover the requirements for the creation and capture of full and accurate records, the establishment and maintenance of a records management uh, program, the safe, safe storage and preservation of records in the custody of the public office, maintaining technology dependent records and keeping them accessible over time, undertaking records disposal using authorised rete records retention and disposal authorities, the transfer of records identified as state archives in the retention and disposal authorities, the transfer of these records to the state archives collection and providing access directions for all records over the age of 30 years. The Act establishes New South Wales State Archives and Records, also known as SARA, as the regulator of records management and record keeping in the New South Wales government. This means that SARA formally supervises records management and record keeping in the New South Wales public sector. SARA has regulatory powers which allow us to issue formal requirements or the rules to public officers. This includes issuing the records management standards, codes of best practice and the retention and disposal authorities. We can also provide records management services such as guidance and training to assist and support public officers in their compliance with the Act and the rules. SARA also has powers to monitor records management and record keeping. Okay, um, during 2020, we reviewed how we use our regulatory powers and at the approach that we take to regulating the State Records Act. This work has meant we've developed a new responsive regulatory approach and we focus on assisting and collaborating with public officers to achieve good record keeping. The new regulatory framework outlines our three primary objectives and these are to assist public officers to be compliant, to monitor and report on compliance and the state of records management and record keeping in public offices and to promote excellence in records management and record keeping. The new regulatory framework has been issued and it's available on our website. You just need to go to the advice section of government record keeping, look for the advice box listed as monitoring and you'll find the record keeping, uh, the new regulatory framework for regulating the State Records Act actually in that box. Now, a key component of the new regulatory framework is the RMAT. So, in designing and developing the records management assessment tool, we had a number of questions that needed to be answered as part of the design process. Firstly, where are the gaps in record keeping practice across the New South Wales public sector? SARA needs to know where these gaps are so that we can address them with further guidance and assistance. Secondly, how can public officers measure their current level of record keeping maturity and compliance? At the centre of our requirements is assisting public officers to improve their record keeping. The RMAT is focused on um, assisting public officers. 
Each public office needs to know how good or how bad their record keeping is and where the gaps uh, are in practice. This information needs to be able to be reported up to senior management so that they're also aware of the current status um, of records and information management in the organisation. Thirdly, what does best practice or compliant record keeping look like? How does SARA assist public officers in understanding what best practice is? How can we make something complex much simpler so that an organisation knows what it needs to do or what it needs to aim for? And lastly, our last question was, how does SARA assist, assess record keeping across 370 organisations so that we can report to the minister and the parliament? SARA is still a regulator so we need to have a way of assessing record keeping across the jurisdiction and reporting on compliance. Now the new RMAT will help us to answer these questions. Okay, so what is the records management assessment tool? Basically, it's a self-assessment tool based on the requirements in the State Records Act and the standards issued under the Act um, designed for public officers for use by public officers. It covers the records management, disposal, transfer and access obligations from the Act. As I mentioned before, at the heart of our design considerations are the public officers. Public officers have been the key stakeholders in this project. We co-designed the RMAT with public officers. We worked collaboratively with over 20 public officers to develop the tool to ensure that your needs and your requirements were incorporated into the design. Public officers will be able to use the data from the RMAT to identify gaps or the need for improvements. They'll also be able to identify areas of good performance or maturity and to be able to report these to senior management. Results from the RMAT can be incorporated into business cases and for planning investment into records and information management initiatives. With ongoing use of the tool and corrective actions, this is how we're encouraging public officers to voluntarily comply with the State Records Act. Now, over on the right hand side of this slide, you'll see types of assessments. And this is an important area I wanted to note. Um, the RMAT is scalable. You can use it for a range of assessments. You can assess the whole organisation if that's what you want to do. Or you can assess a business unit or division of your organisation or particular systems. You can also use it to assess the governance of the records management program. Down on the bottom of the slide, as I've mentioned before, um, part of this process is reporting on the state of record keeping in New South Wales. During 2021, We'd like to see public officers downloading the RMAT, using the RMAT and getting used to it and getting familiar with it, um, testing it out on assessments on, on, in your organisation um, to see where you're actually sitting at this point in time. From next year, we'll be asking public officers to provide reports from the RMAT to us. This formal reporting process will enable us to report on compliance across the jurisdiction and the state of record keeping in New South Wales. Um, now, available on the SARA website. So the RMAT is available from the website. It is free to use and download. Um, it's available in both Word and Excel formats. Um, you can make a choice which format you wish to use. It's also available. Um, there is also available instructions for the RMAT, quite detailed instructions, and also an FAQ page. Um, so they're all available there on the website. And we also have plans for an RMAT portal, which will allow for online reporting to make it a little bit easier. Um, but the spreadsheet and the Word documents are available right now on the website for you to use. Okay, so um, I'm planning now to share my screen and take you on a virtual tour of the RMAT um, and let you have a look at the details. Um, I'm going to use the Excel spreadsheet version of the RMAT for this tour as this provides you with automated results. Now the Excel spreadsheet and the Word document are exactly the same. The only difference is that the spreadsheet has this automated 
feature. Um, so it generates the results as you do the assessment. Obviously, in the Word version, you'll need to calculate the results and create your own graphs. Um, so I would really recommend using the spreadsheet version um, because obviously as soon as you do your assessment, you've got your results sitting there ready to go. Um, whereas in the Word, you're gonna to have to do a little bit more extra work, um, but you're most welcome to use either the Word version or the Excel spreadsheet version for your assessments. So what I'm going to do, um, and we hope that the technology works, is I am going to just escape from that and I am going to change my screen. Um, and this is where she crosses her fingers. Um, and I share a different screen with you. This is all good. Okay, now I just want to confirm, can you see my screen? Can you see an Excel spreadsheet? Yes, we can, Catherine. Lovely, <laughs> that worked. Phew. Okay, here we go. Now, um, this is the Excel spreadsheet. Now I'm going to take you through each of the tabs that are listed at the, the bottom of the spreadsheet down here on the very bottom. And we're gonna start off with the first page and that's the introduction. Now, this is a very brief introduction to the um, RMAT here. I really highly recommend that you read the instructions Word document that's on the website that has uh, much more detail about how to actually use it. But the um, quick, quick, simple instructions are here on the front page if you need them. Now, the next tab along is the title page. Um, she says, yes, it opens up, great. Okay, this is an important page because this is where you collect information about your organization and the assessment that you're actually doing. Um, this is actually quite useful for you because it puts your assessment into context. So um, for anyone who wants to review your assessment or understand the assessment that you're making, this provides them with a lot of detail to understand what exactly you were doing um, during this assessment, how you conducted it, what the scope of this assessment is. Now, um, being an Excel spreadsheet, it's also got a few neat features here. Now scrolling down, um, when you're identifying your organisation, first of all, you'll need to identify what cluster or division of government you're from. Now in our, sorry, I'm just looking for something here. There's a drop down menu, there we go. Um, all the clusters of government are actually listed here. So just scroll up and down until you find the one that belongs to you. I'll just check, check Premier and Cabinet and we might do a registration here for New South Wales State Archives and Records. We'll just scroll down. So basically the cluster and public office are connected. Now if you're from a council or a university, go to this cluster listing and just scroll down because all the universities are actually listed as well in an automated way. So you can use the drop down menus to find your university. So I know we have somebody from the University of Newcastle on the call today. So that's how you identify your university. If you're from a council, just scroll down that cluster listing until you find councils. Um, and then once again, you have a drop down menu of all the councils in New South Wales. Um, so we might go for Bayside, there you go. Now, if you're an organization that doesn't fit the clusters of government, universities or councils, um, you need to select other, and then in free text, write the name of your organization in there. Um, and that's specifically for organizations that may not be covered by part two of the State Records Act. So the courts, tribunals and um, parliamentary um, parts of government. So. Scrolling down, this is where you start to provide some detail about the scope of your assessment. So in this area, business units and information systems, you can identify if you're only doing a part of your organization or you're only assessing a business unit or an information system. Just pop in the details. The more information you provide, the easier it is for someone to understand the assessment. Sometimes, you may be assessing a number of public offices as part of the process. So include those details in the other public offices field if necessary. 
Then we go into obviously contact details for the person who's doing the assessment or an external assessor. So we're collecting information about the assessment. Then the next thing is we've identified what the scope of the assessment is. So what are the parameters of the assessment? The next part is to actually understand the approach of the assessment. So this is really the techniques you've used to actually complete the assessment. So just identify here whether you've used workshops or interviews or meetings, or um, you've done it through document analysis, just so that people actually understand what your approach was in doing the assessment. Then the last box down here is your organisational context. So that's really an understanding of the environment in which you're operating. So add the relevant details that you feel are necessary for understanding this particular assessment. Okay. Now let's move to the RMAT tab. This is the heart of the RMAT. This is the 19 questions that need to be answered to determine um, what the assessment is. Now each question has five levels of response which are listed in the responses column and those five levels are five levels of maturity in relation to that specific topic of the question. And you'll need to select one of those five um, to answer the question. Now, when you select a response in this um, section, so using the select column, you select a response here, level three is already ticked. Um, this automatically populates the results tab, which is the next tab we'll look at. Um, we've actually decided to um, go through and answer the RMAT for a hypothetical organisation just so that you can actually see the types of results, um, graphs and information that is available to you rather than just leave it blank and um, uh, obviously not as clearly um, apparent in terms of what, what you'll get out of the results tab. Now, I would ask you that before you start your assessment, please go through the spreadsheet um, and take the ticks off for each of the 19 questions. So a very simple process, there's a drop down menu and then make your assessment of which question, uh, which answer you want for a question. So I'm just going to tick that again. So we have a, a res response at the back in our results tab for our hypothetical organisation. Now, I will say with choosing a response, it's quite possible that you won't have one response. You may have um, a feeling that you actually belong somewhere between two levels, or you may be almost at the next level. Um, what we would suggest you do is that you take the lower level. So if you feel that you're between say a two and a three, please take the two. If you're between a three and a four, take the three. Um, because that really reflects the current status that you are at at this point in time. And it's really important that you answer the questions honestly, as an honest assessment will help your organisation to truly understand its current records and information status and to make evidence-based decisions on improving records and information management. It's better to choose the response that accurately reflects the current state, even if it's a low score. Your assessment is then a true representation of your current state. From our perspective, we'd rather you made an honest assessment. And if obviously you have low scores or areas of concern, get in touch with us and we can have a conversation with you about what's actually happening in the assessment and areas that may need to be looked at more closely. Remember that SARA is here to support all 370 public officers. Now, I was just going to mention in terms of the questions, um, if you've had a look at the RMAT, you may sort of go, oh, how does this actually fit with the standards and the, the Act? Now, what we've done is we've actually created questions around broad areas of practice or requirements. So rather than running you through all of the compliance requirements in a standard, we've actually chosen to look at it more from a topic level um, from a practice or a topic process um, and get you to feed into an answer about where you're sitting for that particular area of practice. Now, the 19 questions have also been divided up into three categories. 
So the first category is people and governance and the questions reflect those kinds of areas of practice. The second set of the second category is systems and business and the questions reflect what you would expect to find in relation to practice around systems and business. And the last category is information management. And once again, the questions reflect broader information management um, requirements. But I, I will emphasize there is no new requirements in this um, assessment tool. The, assess the requirements are based on the existing requirements in the standards that have been issued under the Act and also the obligations for all public officers under the State Records Act. So um, yes, so there's 19 questions there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll across this worksheet page because I'd like to show you what else is available on each pay on for each question. Now just sliding across, um, you have a column for your supplementary comments. So as you're doing your assessment, you may want to make comments about current state, how things are going, um, things that have come to your attention as part of your assessment. Pop your comments into this column. Um, that way you're collecting all this information as you go along. The next column is examples of evidence to justify your response. Now, what this is actually about is identifying what is the basis for you making the decision about the response that you've given in the self-assessment. Now, this might be so that you actually have information that you can advise to your senior management that due to this particular plan or report, etc., this is the reason why I've actually given this response. It's also possible that this evidence may be called on at another time by another organisation to understand the response that you've given to your question. So don't be too, too phased out about it. Um, it's really just there to assist you. Now, the next column along is the REQ column. You just see that there. Now, what REQ stands for is requirements. Now, we know everybody wants to know what's the basis for the question, so we have included that right up front. So you'll see in this column what is the requirement or the basis for the question that's being asked. Now, for this question on high risk, high value records, the requirement is compliance requirement 2.2 from the standard on records management. Now, there's a very detailed listing of requirements down here in the tab REQs, and we'll look at that shortly. But just to let you know, here's the shorthand relation between the question and the requirement. Now, just moving along, the next column is about how this action supports the development of records and information management maturity. This is an explanation of the requirements and really is the why, the answer to the why question. So why does doing this help achieve maturity in this particular area of records and information management and how can it support um, further development in the organisation? So it's really the answer to the why question. The next two columns are guidance and we realise that some of the questions may prompt uh, some of the questions in the RMAT may prompt questions in your organisation about what does this actually mean? Where do I go for further information? So we've actually put that into the, the spreadsheet as well. And it's also in the Word document so that you have a link to go to to find out more information about this particular um, topic and question. Now, before I jump into the results tab, there's one thing I want to note. Um, we have actually set a baseline for compliance in this tool. So the baseline of compliance is actually set at level three. So if you select a level two as your answer or a level one, then you'll be below the baseline. If you select level four, then you'll be above the baseline. Once again, I would reiterate, please do an honest assessment um, give the true representation of the state of play in your organisation. Um, it's okay to have a low score and we understand that. It's been many years since we've actually asked you to do assessments. Um, so it's quite probable that there will be low scores and we understand that. Um, just remember, keep the assessment accurate, reflect the current state, no matter how worried you might be about actually giving yourself a, a score of one or two. Um, don't panic. That's my answer to that one. Don't panic. Now, moving on to the results tab. 
this is where the spreadsheet comes into its own. Um, you can quickly see at a glance the results of your assessment. Um, now, the first part of the results page is actually this lovely table which groups all the questions into those three categories. So people and governance, systems and business and information management. It has the question here. It gives the maturity score that you've selected in the um, RMAT tab what that score actually was in terms of the response. So you can understand that level two actually was this response here. Then you can actually get a score for the entire category. So for people and governance, this hypothetical organization has got a score of 55.6 for people and governance. Scrolling down, they've scored 56% for systems and business. And scrolling down further, they've scored 48% for information management. So you can see quite clearly, simply where the issues might be in terms of gaps of practice or areas that need improving. Um, scrolling further down on the result page, you'll find the graphs. Now these can be easily copied and pasted into reports for senior management. So the first one we have is our lovely bar graph. And there's the baseline in orange. So there's the baseline of compliance at level three. So very quick and easy to see whether you're above or below or actually on the baseline for compliance. So that's one, one graph. Then sliding down the page, you've got a spider graph. Um, now in this case, you've got the orange line of the baseline compliance at level three. And you can see clearly for our hypothetical organisation whether they're above or below the line or potentially even sitting on the line. Um, so that's there for you as well. Now, for those of you who like traffic light reporting, we've also catered to that as well. So on the right hand side, you've got this table. Um, now, this table maps the requirements from the standards um, and the Act with the RMAT question and gives you a red or a green light in terms of whether or not you're meeting that requirement. So another quick and easy way to see where the gaps are, where the improvement might be needed. It doesn't show you the level or um, uh, the response. It gives you, basically this is drawing from the uh, auto populated is drawing from the fields that you've responded to. So obviously you've got a red light if you've got a level one or a level two. You've got a green light if you're a three, four or five in this particular area of practice. And if you scroll all the way down, you go through the standard on records management, the standard on physical storage, and then right at the very bottom, the um, part four requirements for the transfer of archives and the part six requirements for the access directions for um, those records that are over 30 years old. Okay, now just moving along the other tabs of information that are here for you. Um, these are additional pieces of information really to just assist you in your understanding. Um, so we have the domains here, the information domains, and this is here um, to provide further information about achieving maturity in records and information management and how that can support further development across your organization. We also have included information about the maturity levels because we know that people are always curious about what's the basis for a level level two versus a level four. What do you mean by this? So we've actually incorporated that into the tool so you can see what a level two actually means. Um, and then, as I explained earlier, requirements. Um, now, this spells out in detail the actual question the requirements from the standards or the Act and what that actual requirement is. So if you're looking for more information to match up the question with the requirement and understand more about the requirement, come to the requirement um, worksheet in the um, RMAT. Now the next tab along is the detailed explanatory notes. These notes are additional information. They are designed to provide further information about the question and requirement. They don't, um, they draw on the guidance that we've used. Um, they're not in addition to the guidance, but they may help explain to you the purpose of the question and what's 
um, to be achieved in that topic or area of practice. So um, if you're curious and have questions, have a look at the detailed explanatory notes. Once again, it's by question with the requirements spelt out. Um, I'll just scroll down here. So if you're interested in the um, background for the um, senior responsible officer, just trying to get that on one, there we go, on one page. Um, there is the requirement from the standard on records management, um, look at minimum compliance requirements 1.2, 1.3, and then we've got some explanatory text about this role and responsibility and why it's important. So just further information for you. Um, now, the last tab in the RMAT is the listing of public officers. So if you're curious about what was in those drop down menus on the title page, um, all the public officers have been exposed here on this last tab. So you can feel free to have a look at the listing. Um, obviously, if you have questions about who's in the listing or that you might feel that someone's missing from the listing, feel free to get in contact with us at GovRec. Um, email inquiry address um, and we can talk to you about that. Now um, I'm just going to go back over here. So my top tips for you in completing the RMAT um, and doing your assessment is I would suggest that you download the Excel spreadsheet from the website and explore the questions. Um, read the responses um, and think through your answers and responses, fill in the assessment process. I would also highly recommend that you read the instructions that are on the website page. These are available for download and there's an awful lot of detail in those instructions which you might find useful. Um, I'd also suggest checking out the FAQ page which is on our website. Um, because somebody may have asked the same question um, or there may be further information in the FAQ page which might help you in understanding or answering your question. Um, and if all else fails, contact Record Keeping Standards and Advice on our govrec at records.newsouthwales.gov.au email address. Um, we're here to help. Um, and we also want to hear from you about the RMAT. We want to hear about your experiences. So we put the call out for anybody who wants to tell us about their experiences as part of a case study process. And we'll also be asking for some feedback on the RMAT as part of our upcoming satisfaction survey. So that's, that's the end of the formal presentation.